Oh, man, I've got a fun one for you today. I mean, not to say that the other ones haven't been fun, but this one is just particularly enjoyable. We're going to talk about quadratic functions, and those are functions that have this type of shape, or this form. So ax squared plus bx plus c. You know, if a is 0, then of course the x squared term gets killed, but so we don't want that. Um, really, a quadratic function is going to have this x squared term nice and prominent. The common one that you already know is just y equals x squared. That's the classic quadratic, and it has this parabola shape. That's what that shape is called. Here's another not-so-familiar example, maybe something like this. It's a quadratic because we've got that x squared term, and a, b, and c, those letters from above, can be read off just from here. a is the number in front of x squared, which is negative 1 half. b is the number in front of x. There's no x, so b is 0. And c is the constant term, which is 3. Now we're going to talk about what the graphs of these quadratic functions look like. It turns out they're all very similar to that parabola shape. In fact, they really are just that parabola shape, but it could be flipped upside down, as you'll see. So these are your two options, and it really only depends on this number a. If a is a positive number, then it's going to be what we call opening up. And if that number a is negative, it's going to open down. You might notice that this parabola has a turning point. That actually has a name. It's called the vertex. And there's a formula to figure out what the x value is. Negative b over 2a. That's the x coordinate of the vertex right here. This b and this a are the letters from the quadratic function itself. So you'll read those off of whatever specific function you have. You might also know that there's a little bit of symmetry, meaning this parabola looks the same on both sides of the vertex, right? That's called an axis of symmetry. Now that we've learned a little bit of vocab surrounding quadratic functions, we're going to use a tool called the quadratic formula that can solve any quadratic equal to zero. You've probably seen it before. It looks a lot like this. Well, actually, this is it. It looks exactly like this. But this is kind of a bummer to memorize. I mean, that, that's a pretty hefty-looking equation there. It's very useful because it tells you how to solve any quadratic equals 0. It tells you exactly what the x values are. But it's a pain to memorize. You're in luck today because I've got a little story for you that will help you memorize this. So it's a, just a little story, and the words from the story correspond to the letters or the variables that are in the quadratic formula here. For example, when I say the word boy, it's going to be talking about that letter B right there. So here it goes. A negative boy couldn't decide to go to a radical party or B squared. So he missed out on four awesome chicks, and the party was all over at 2 a.m. That's a super fun way to memorize this nasty-looking quadratic formula. It's way better than just trying to look at this over and over again and memorize it that way. I really suggest that you read this, memorize this story. It'll make the quadratic formula so much more fun. All right, let's take our knowledge to an example. Here's a graph of the function right here. You notice that this is a quadratic function, right? Because it's got that x squared term. You also notice that it opens down. Let's see if we can remember why that is. So let's look at this. Let's figure out what a, b, and c are. And you probably remember that that a being a negative number means the quadratic, or the parabola, opens down. What I want to find now is what is the y-intercept? That just means you set x equal to 0 in the function. Boom, up, out pops 1, and that's your y-intercept. Let's find the vertex. Remember the vertex is negative b over 2a from the first slide? Well, there you go. This is how you do it. Plug in b and a from the equation into your vertex formula. Out pops the x value. How do you find the y value? Just take that and plug it into the function. 
and out pops 3. There's your y value. The next thing I want to find are the x-intercepts. Those happen when the y value is equal to 0, in other words, when the function is 0. To find this, we need to use the quadratic formula. Yay! Well, what's the quadratic formula, you might ask? Uh, it's only that super cool story you learned about that negative boy. So you take the numbers from the function, plug them into the quadratic formula, simplify as best as you can, and let's see what we get out of this. Plus or minus means you have to split it up into 1 with a plus and 1 with a minus. Now dividing by negative 1 is just going to change the signs of all of these. So these are our x-intercepts. Those are the x-values right there. Pretty cool. Now it's your turn to show off your knowledge. With this quadratic function here, x squared uh, minus 2x plus 3 here. Oh, sorry, minus 3. That's my bad. x squared minus 2x minus 3. I want you to find the vertex, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, whether or not it opens up or down. I want you to graph it. You know, think about how the quadratic formula compares to factoring. Show off your skills.